If you've got an iPhone or a little board with iOS and you're interested in moonlighting with Google's Android operating system, you can dual boot with Android and iOS side by side on your iPhone in a few relatively simple steps. All you need to get started is an iOS device. Right now the iPhone 3G has the best support and that's what we're using in this guide. Here's the quick version. Step 1. Jailbreak your iPhone. You've got a number of jailbreaking options including Pwnage Tool, Red Snow, and Black Rain. Pick one that works for your platform, download it, and walk through the jailbreak process. Step 2. Install Bootlace in Cydia. In order to do this, you'll need to launch Cydia from the home screen, tap on the Manage button, select Sources, then tap Edit, then Add. The repository you'll need to add is repo.neonkoala.co.uk. Tap Add Source, let Cydia work its magic, and then tap on your newly added repository and install Bootlace. Step 3. Run Bootlace and patch the kernel. If Bootlace isn't on your home screen after you leave Cydia, restart your iPhone and it should be there. Then just launch Bootlace and let it download and patch the kernel. When it's done, tap on Reboot and wait for your phone to reboot. Step 4. Install Open iBoot. Now, launch Bootlace again, tap the Open iBoot button, and tap Install, then Continue. Open iBoot will download and install. Step 5. Install iDroid. Once Open iBoot is installed, tap the iDroid button, tap Install, OK, and then Wait iDroid, which is essentially the Android OS customized for your iPhone, will download and install. This will take a while, so be patient. And if your battery is low, you may want to plug in your phone before you start. Now you've officially installed Android on your iPhone. Time to play around with it. Okay, so here's sort of a look at how Android on the iPhone is performing right now. Uh, as you can see, it's a normal lock screen, and uh, slide to unlock works. It's a little bit weird. Um, the notification pull down, that all works. Um, I've got my SIM card that used uh, from from my Android in this, and it can make calls, it can receive. You can see launching can be a little bit laggy. Um, same with the keyboard, even though it actually works pretty well. Um, the the screen on or the sorry the the lock button on top actually works as the back button um, the home button works as the menu button um, most of the stuff is sort of how you'd expect it's not great performance wise uh, the web works um, it's connected to the Wi-Fi in my apartment right now or maybe it's not <laughs> Uh, but it does work with the Wi-Fi. Uh, I had it on earlier. And the volume buttons also act as... Oh, ignore Adam's phone number. <laughs> the volume buttons also work as uh, something. I'm not really sure what that one did. Uh, I guess volume down would be the equivalent of home. Yeah. Um, so volume down is the home button. Holding this brings up the keyboard in weird places sometimes. Um, but in general, it actually works surprisingly well. Uh, power management still isn't working, so when the screen turns off, it sort of doesn't turn off. Um, let me see if I can... There, I think pushing both at the same time puts me into the lock screen. Um, and, uh, yeah, then, let's see. Oh, and if you want to, if you want to shut it down, I believe, let me see if I can remember. You hold down something. That's not going to do it. Um, geez. <laughs> okay, hold down these two together, and it brings up the, the power off button. So you can go power off, and uh, it'll shut down. When it res uh, when you power it back up, you get the open iBoot screen, which I'll show you in a second, and that allows you to 
boot back into iOS or boot into Android or boot into a console mode. Okay, so once you power it back on, you got open iBoot. You can uh, go between your options by pressing the lock button and then select the one you want to boot into with the home button. That's all there is to it.